Considering the subject of time and the whole concept of the future. And the point of departure that I would like to suggest to you is that time is a social institution and not a physical reality. Most civilized people are out of touch with reality because they confuse the world as it is with the world as they think about it. Just as we confuse, say, money with wealth. A lot of people are in business to make money instead of wealth. When they make the money, they don't know what to do with it. Time is money, you say. I don't have enough time. Time flies, time drags. And I think we should go into the question of what this is because in our ordinary common sense, we think of time as a one-way motion from the past through the present and on into the future. But actually, the world is not composed of bits like this. Because you see, in the world, everything is happening all together everywhere at once. And meanwhile, we, with our myopic little minds, are working it out step by step. The world we live in doesn't consist so much of things or entities as it consists of process. All things, however separate they may seem to be, are in a state of flux. Everything is in a constant state of flowing pattern. Constant state of flowing pattern. Everything is in a constant state of flowing pattern. Constant state of flowing By way of illustration, you might say that it's something like the flowing pattern you see when you look at smoke. A dancing, constantly changing arabesque of pattern. Flowing, flowing all the time. Time, time, time. And say that the past is the result of the present. Let us suppose, just for the sake of example, that this universe started with a big bang. Bang, millions of years ago, billions of years ago, which flung all the galaxies into space. Well, let's take that just for the sake of argument and say that was the way it happened. It's like uh, you took a bottle of ink and smash, and all that ink spreads. And in the middle, it's dense, isn't it? And as it gets out on the edge, the little droplets are finer and finer and make more complicated patterns. See? We have the complicated little patterns on the end of it. Very interesting. And so, the individual and the universe are inseparable. astrologers, in theory at least, may not have been so far wrong when in trying to draw a picture of a human mind or soul, they drew a very crude map of the whole universe centered on the time and place of the birth of that particular person. It's not a bad idea, but I don't think the astrologers know how to read their maps. We descry things and events in the same way as we would project images on a Rorschach blot or pick out particular groups of stars in the sky and call them constellations as if they were separate groups of stars. Well, they're groups of stars in the mind's eye in our system of concepts. They are not out there as constellations already grouped in the sky. So in the same way, the difference between myself and all the rest of the universe is nothing more than an idea. It is not a real difference. 
If you think that you are only inside your skin, you define yourself as one very complicated little curly cue, way out on the edge of that explosion, way out in space and way out in time. Billions of years ago, you were a big bang. But now you're a complicated human being. I want to draw your attention to a fallacy in the very common sense idea of causality. That events are caused by previous events from which they flow or result necessarily. You're not something that is a result of the Big Bang on the end of the process. You are still the process. I know I'm that too. Now when that bang happened, it was the present, wasn't it? The universe began in what we will call a now moment. Then it goes on doing its stuff. And always when any event that we now call past came into being, it came into being in the present and out of the present. Everything is in a constant state of flowing pattern. All events are really one event. We're looking, when we talk about different events, we're looking at different sections or parts of one continuous happening. The mystery that we can never understand. Life moves along like water, which I can hold in my hands so long as I cup it gently. But if I clutch at the water, I immediately lose it. Why do we want to do that? Why do we want to be able to describe the world in terms and in patterns that we can understand. And surely the answer is that if we can interpret the unknown in terms of the known, if we can describe what is going on in the world in regular patterns, we can predict what things are going to do next. We time the apparent rising of the sun and we find that it rises daily in a regular rhythm and so every new day we feel we can bet on the sun following the same rhythm since it has done so for so long. Now as far as I can see the basic mistake is that we've invented this wonderful system of language and calculation and that it is at once too simple to deal with the complexity of the world and also we are liable to confuse that system of symbols with the world itself and reality itself is not a concept reality is see this is the real secret of life to be completely engaged with what you're doing in the here and now. The future is a concept. It doesn't exist. As the proverb says, tomorrow never comes. We are only really ever alive now. Bring in your mind to the state of reality. Now. There is no such thing as tomorrow. There is no past and there is no future. There never will be and we get distracted from living fully now by having our eye on the future. The point of life is always arrived at in the immediate moment. I don't know what could be more realistic than this, what could be more fundamentally facing the hard facts of life. There is just now. Now. Time is always now. And so the ultimate experience of Buddhism is when we come together with ourselves again and as a result of coming together with ourselves find that we are together with everything, that we are not a separate, cut-off being, but that this whole universe is ourselves.